everyone. Hi, thanks for having me, uh, Ocean Institute, and those who are tuning in. Um, today, I'm going to present to you about some of the opportunities we have here at Florida International University, specifically our North Campus, uh, the Biscayne Bay Campus, uh, which is geared towards marine biology. So just to orientate um, you guys, this is our campus view here. Uh, we are right on Biscayne Bay. Um, over down in this area, you would find downtown Miami, and this building right here is dedicated towards our marine science program. So, you know, what is marine biology? Well, it's a study of marine organisms, and we're not only interested in the organisms, but we also are trying to understand how the environment interacts between them. Um, and we use many different fields kind of combined together in order to answer these questions. So it's a combination of physical, oceanography, um, as well as biological and chemical, um, kind of all coming together to answer these complex questions. So really, uh, marine science is an interdisciplinary focus, and it can cover a very wide range of opportunities for you um in a career path right so there's those who go down and study shipwrecks um there's some people who are focused in the plant life oh, excuse me um oftentimes right from nature we are able to find medicine um, there is the more legal legislation side of marine science uh, you can get into scuba diving side of it um helping go out teach people education side of it really so I think that there's a wide range and oftentimes it's sort of pick your adventure and it's not just one area that you focus on, um, but you kind of get to mix and match. So for example, I am an educator, I am a scuba diver, um, I am a chemistry person, I am an oceanographer and I am a, an ecologist. So I kind of get to combine all these different fields to answer my questions. So, you know, why study marine biology? Well, first of all, it's really important because most of the air we get uh, in our atmosphere comes from the ocean, right? So all the little algae and plankton out there are photosynthesizing and producing our oxygen. Um, it also helps uh, with the economy, right? So a lot of people rely on food as well as recreation um, from the ocean uh, climate regulation. So how do we mitigate uh, CO2 levels in our atmosphere, how does that affect the ocean's uh, acidity? Um, what's going on with transportation as there's more boats in the ocean, there's more noise, you know, what about mammals that are communicating through noise? Um, what is that kind of happening? So there's all sorts of different components, again, um, into why it's important to care and why this is a, a good field to go into. So you know, can you actually make a living um, from marine biology? And this is encouraging news even for me as a graduate student here getting ready to enter into the workforce um, that the median pay, right, is well above the average pay across all occupations. So um, you can be successful um, and, you know, get a entry level job with a bachelor's degree. Um, however, you know, it is encouraged to pursue further education in order to kind of help move up the pay grade per se. So um, if you're worried about being able to actually make a career out of this, I think that hopefully this will encourage you that, yeah, um, it is possible to be successful doing this. So what can I do with a marine biology degree, right? So it's an interdisciplinary field and you can kind of do all sorts of different tasks. So you can become a, science, a research scientist, you can focus on environmental technician, um, you can do engineering with the boats, you can do consultation, photography, illustration. Um, so really there's just a wide variety of different outlets. And so myself, I'm actually still trying to figure out what I want to do. And I think that that's important to uh, understand that to go into it, you don't necessarily have to know like, oh, I want to become a professor or I want to become uh, a researcher, you know, um, so it's, it's something that allows you to grow and change and kind of dabble in different areas and mix and match what you like, um, which is something that I've personally really enjoyed about my career path. So 
you know, why become or how to become a marine biologist, excuse me. Um, you know, the best training, right, is going to be through a university program. Um, we're going to give you nice foundation in the core subjects. So in your biology, your chemistry, um, we're also going to focus on oceanography, uh, you know, what's going on with the currents, how is the water chemistry affecting things. Um, and this one is very dear to my heart, research experience and internal op opportunities. So personally, I was not a great student. Um, textbooks are not really my thing. However, I was able to reach out and volunteer my time, work with other graduate students as an undergrad and kind of figure out what I like what I'm good at, what I don't enjoy. Um, so I would really encourage you guys, if you are getting into this field, to go out, volunteer, um, try and get involved in a lab. Uh, even if it may not be directly related to your end goal, I think that there is a set of skills you will gain that you'd be surprised uh, how diverse and uh, you might be able to apply them to other fields. Um, and also, right, so we're gonna offer you the ability to interact with our faculty, advisors, and other students here um, at FIU. Uh, and that, again, I think is an opportunity for you to build off the research experience. Um, so how do you train to become a marine biologist? Well, we have a core curriculum of lower division courses, which include marine biology, general bio one and two, inorganic chemistry and physics. Um, and we also offer uh, a lot of these courses all at our BBC campus. So as a marine bio major here at FIU, you would be able to strictly stay at the North Campus if you would like, um, where like the general bio labs here, we're able to utilize going out onto the boats, um, going out and collecting fish, doing snorkeling trips, um, as compared to the other campus where it's more of a laboratory setting uh, geared kind of more pre-med because they don't have the opportunities that we have with the location of our campus. Um, so, and then there's also a series of upper division courses. So ecology, genetics, evolution, marine biology, oceanography, physical oceanography, uh, and then a senior seminar. And you guys would get to choose uh, five of these from, you know, four different categories. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of different other topics here, including fish biology, marine botany, uh, cell biology, and a lot of these also have associated labs. So, for example, I get to teach um, our ecology lab. And we go out down into the Everglades. Um, we go to the um, out, go trawling in the bay, doing species richness counts and that kind of stuff. So I think we really get to exploit some of the resources we have here um, with our courses. Um, our program is composed of our director here, Dr. Kevin Boswell. Uh, he is a marine acoustics person uh, using sonar. Uh, this, I'd like to draw you to attention to Sarah Schoen. She is our marine biology advisor and would be someone who is specifically designated to our marine bio program uh, to help you guys get connections with graduate students, um, apply for jobs, uh, and select coursework to kind of help set you up for where you want to go in the future. Uh, and then we also have two other advisors that are designated for the overall biology department that are also available to you as a resource. So again, back to kind of our location, here is our marine science building. Um, here is downtown Miami. Uh, and this is the wonderful Biscayne Bay coming in here. We have our boat launch over in this area, and then this is our new facility that we are working on, the Coastal Restoration, um, Coastal Coral and Restoration Research Lab, um, where we have multiple big outdoor aquatic tanks. Uh, we are working on doing some sea urchin aquaculture, as well as uh, Caribbean king crab work here. So that's some kind of exciting work that's happening in this area. Uh, so off of this boat ramp here, some of the courses that you may be able to take, right, is a field marine biology course in this class. You guys would be going out conducting trawl data uh, for both fish as well as plankton. Um, the students get to conduct their own research experiment uh, and implement it throughout the class. 
So we really give you the opportunity to experience the scientific method, you know, come up with a question, um, go out, ask that question, develop the data, come in, process it and present it. Um, we do put a nice focus on trying to statistically kind of analyze data. Uh, we teach you guys how to use our software uh, from a very early stage. So that way, when you are ready to move on to your next step in your career path, you already have those skills um, under your belt. Another awesome class that we offer here through FIU is the Biological Oceanography at Sea. Excuse me. So with this class, um, you basically get to start from square one to the end in planning, in planning uh, and participating in a oceanic cruise. So you go through all the steps of developing different permitting, how to um, navigate, set your course, um, what kind of supplies and content you need to bring on. Then you go out on the boat for multiple days, you conduct different surveys, uh, and you participate in some active uh, monitoring programs. So this is another really cool class that we have here at FIU. Um, and something else that I really personally enjoy uh, and is something that brought me to the field of marine biology is the scuba diving. So uh, we offer scientific diving training through the AAUS Institute. Um, and we have a Olympic side swimming pool here on campus where we do all of our pool diving. And then we are just a few hour drive from the Florida Keys. And so we go down to the Keys and do all of our ocean diving down there. Also in the Keys, uh, FIU has the world's only undersea laboratory, the uh, Median Aquarius program. And so this is basically a giant permanent submarine um, underwater at about 60 feet and it's located um, down here in the Keys, and they have um, all kinds of different missions that go on. One of the really cool things that happens here is the NASA astronauts come uh, and use this facility to help train for spacewalks um, because they're able to not worry about um, taking on too much nitrogen or getting the bends, as you might have heard of. Um, because this is a fully compressed chamber. Um, and so the first trip actually for this was a grad advisor and three grad students. Uh, and they lived on this little 43 foot long submarine for 31 days. Um, and as we've all kind of gone through COVID quarantine, I imagine, you know, trying to, to live on this little thing was quite a social uh, experiment as well as the actual science experiment. So um, this is a really cool facility that we have and operate through FIU. Um, so here is our coastal conservation and restoration lab that I had talked about earlier from the map view. Um, and we have several thousand gallon water tanks that we have the capability of housing um, some really cool experiments for the graduate students as well as some of the undergrad work um, particularly with our aquaculture program that we have going on. So here at FIU, uh, within our marine biology program, we have 24 affiliated faculty members. Uh, there are 17 particularly focused or based here at our Biscayne Bay campus. Um, and they range in different departments from biological science, earth and environment, uh, and chemistry. And so our specialties kind of range in um, marine megafauna, whales, sharks, to the chemistry and toxicology of, you know, tracking pharmaceuticals through fish and that kind of stuff. So uh, at FIU, we have developed several student engagement opportunities for the undergrads. One of the big things is uh, the involvement of women in STEM. So we have two different particular groups for that. Uh, one is geared towards the Marine Science, the Society for Women in Marine Science, um, which is really great. And they help to facilitate, again, similar as your advisor, helping to um, engage in other organizations and get involved with graduate students and faculty. 
Um, here at BBC, we have the Biscayne Bay Science Club. Um, this is where they get to go out and organize community outreach events. Uh, they do social organizations. Um, and they also work with our FIU Marine Biology Club. Uh, where it's kind of a more ocean focused club. Uh, and I know that they organize things such as fun dives um, and beach cleanups and other cool recreational events. So those are some cool opportunities we have particularly here just at our Biscayne Bay campus. Uh, if you'd like to find out more, uh, I think on your little portal, there's uh, probably a shorter link than this, or you can Google FIU Marine Science Program and we are in CASE, which is the College of Arts, Science, and Education. So across FIU as a whole, our research is pretty broad. Um, we cover not only the marine biology, but we also have uh, a lot of work going on in the Everglades, in the wetland ecology. Uh, we also focus on pharmaceutical and public health, uh, terrestrial ecology, water quality, uh, climate change, ecosystem services, conservation, right? So we're kind of uh, have different experts all across different fields. Um, however, our faculty here uh, at BBC ranges in and is focused particularly in marine biology. So some of the highlight or some of the staff here, uh, right, is our director, Dr. Kevin Boswell, who does fisheries ecology um, he uses bioacoustics to kind of monitor fish patterns and movement. Um, and so they work in Alaska. Here's one of their kind of cool little uh, remote controlled sensors. And they also work uh, off the coast of Jupiter with some of the Goliath groupers that are going on. We have Dr. Heather Brecken Grissom, uh, who is a crustacean expert, and she also does genetics uh, and genomic structure of these deep sea organisms, as well as kind of cave dwelling shrimp. Um, so she is a really cool um, expert in, in going on these trans oceanic cruises and going out and collecting all kinds of cool um, inverts. Uh, we have Dr. Mark Butler, who is helping to lead off our coastal restoration um, research lab. He focuses on tropical marine ecology particularly the uh, Caribbean king crab as kind of a grazer to help protect our coral um, population, as well as understanding uh, species diversity and the drivers behind that with sponges. Uh, Dr. Nate Doran is in charge of uh, the aquatic Everglades, so he's sort of a more freshwater focused uh, professor here. Uh, but they go out in the helicopters and airboats and get to go tour around and see the different parts of the Everglades. Uh, we have Dr. Justin Campbell, who's my advisor uh, in the Global Change Biology Lab. Uh, and so we're focused on ecophysiology and community ecology. Uh, we do a lot of different field work, including uh, I, I study consumer mediated nutrients, so how fish produce different nutrients and how that affects uh, the fertilization of seagrass. Um, we also have people working on sargassum, uh, which is a big uh, problem here in South Florida and in the Caribbean islands. Um, and we're also doing different um, carbon effects with CO2 and uh, seagrass beds here. So a lot of different kind of different things going on in our lab. Uh, we have Dr. Aaron Lopez. Uh, he is an epigenetics expert, uh, and he focuses on trying to identify the types of coral that are most resilient to uh, eco or climate change. And so basically, if we want to put a certain species of coral somewhere, we want to make sure it's going to be able to survive that stressor. Um, so he tries to identify which corals are going to be uh, best suited for which conditions. We have Dr. Alistair Harborn. He is our tropical fish ecology lab. Uh, they focus on the movement of fish between seagrass beds and reef, um, how artificial reefs affect um, habitat structure and community, uh, the effects of invasive species, as well as the invasive groupers. Um, Dr. Michael Heithouse, who is the dean of our overall college of case, 
um, does behavioral ecology and predators uh, of predators. And so for those of you who have may have seen a critter cam uh, where they attach a GoPro onto an organism and it goes and swims around, well, Dr. Heithouse was actually the first person to team up with National Geographic and they were catching critter cams with VHSs onto uh, tiger sharks and uh, bull sh or tiger sharks and dolphins. Um, and so because of that, we have a really cool connection with um, National Geographic, as well as Discovery Channel um, and Disney Plus, where our scientists get to be featured on these different documentaries, uh, primarily focusing on shark ecology. Um, we have Dr. Jim Forkren. He is our local seagrass expert um, with seagrass physiology and nutrient cycling. And so they do a lot of work down in the Florida Keys, a lot of scuba diving, um, kind of assessing the health of the seagrass beds. Uh, we have Dr. Jeremy Kiska. He is our marine megafauna um, expert in marine mammals. So they do work all the way up uh, in the Arctic, um, as well as here locally in Florida, looking at manatees. Um, and so they kind of focus on different organisms from dolphins to uh, whales to manatees and turtles. Uh, so Dr. Giannis Papas Statonimus, excuse me, um, is another one of our shark experts who you may have seen on Shark Week. Um, they focus on predator ecology and conservation, and they do work here locally in South Florida as well as in the Bahamas, in Belize, um, and in the French Polynesian. So they get to do all kinds of cool work all over. Um, and his lab is featured on National Geographic and uh, Disney Plus pretty frequently for their work uh, with these apex predators. Uh, another lab here is Dr. Rolando Santes. He is a fish seascape ecologist. Um, as well as fish recreational fisheries. So he looks at kind of how fish movements connect different systems um, and deals with the snook and uh, tarpon populations here. Uh, so kind of the fun recreational fishers. We have Dr. Yu Ying Zhang, who is a fisheries ecosystem management um, and modeler. Uh, so she kind of helps all the different people who give her this data and she cranks out these some really impressive uh, computer models trying to understand how changes in stock or uh, nutrient cycling may affect overall food web dynamics. Um, so here at FIU, we really have a range of different sciences. So we are dealing with uh, ongoing red tide issues here in South Florida. Uh, we're doing active seagrass monitoring in the Keys. We're going out into the Everglades with helicopters and airboats and understanding. So um, I think that we, our location is in itself quite unique and offers us the opportunity to do some really, really awesome regional work. Um, but we're also going around the world uh, and conducting science um, so one of our big things that we have been a part of or, or facilitated is called the Global Finprint Project, uh, where all across the world, we have standardized a way to collect data on shark diversity. Uh, and we're able to assess not only shark diversity, but other species as well through video cameras, uh, which is what this is kind of an example of here. Um, and understand the effects of humans uh, on these apex predators. We're also going around and doing work in the French Polynesians in Belize, um, in Panama, in the Caribbean. Um, so really we get to affect uh, the science at a global scale, which I think is really exciting here. So with that, I'd like to thank uh, Ocean Institute for having me, uh, and I'd be happy to take any questions you guys may have. Um, thank you so much. Um, I mean, it was just really amazing all the information and just that the connection that FAU have with things Disney Plus and National Geographic is, is a lot. Um, with the question, I think that we have one. Uh, I don't know if we, you can see in the Q&A open questions. 
Uh, chat Q and A. Yeah, I can. Do it. Okay. I can read it if if that helps. <laughs> um. Here, I'm gonna just read through it here. Okay. Oh, okay. Can I base my high school courses on? So, if you're home student schooled in California, um, I would say that if you follow the California college prep standards, then that would be up to par with our school standards. Um, but it is something worth reaching out to one of our advisors who may be better able to answer that specific question um, regarding specific interests of yours, because I think that that is something important and we want you to be passionate about what you're learning. Um, but it is also important to kind of make sure you check those admission boxes. Um, so I would advise you to reach out to Sarah Schoen, one of our advisors, or Kevin Boswell um, with that question. So thank you for whoever asked that question. And any others I would be happy to ask. And not only about our program, but also I think sort of marine biology as a whole, if you guys have questions regarding that too. Um, yeah, I have another question actually. Um, what is campus life for you? Um, so here in North Miami, I would say our Biscayne Bay campus is a little bit quieter um, than our main campus. FIU has around uh, I want to say 48,000 undergrads and about 10,000 grad students. So it is a really big campus or a really big school. Um, however, here at the Biscayne Bay campus, um, you're not kind of doing the competing for parking that you sometimes have to do at the other campus. Um, we have some awesome opportunities. Students can go out and uh, check out kayaks into the bay. We have uh, some a brand new dormitory building built here for the students to live right on campus. Um, there's also gym on the campus here and food facilities, including uh, a Chick-fil-A, which is a nice touch that we've added. Yeah, the Chick-fil-A is amazing always. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, uh, I use some more questions. But so we do offer dual degrees. Um, I don't think, uh, no, I don't believe actually we do offer a, a dual degree in that sense, but there is a double major. Um, here it is a marine biology, uh, it's a biology degree with a concentration in marine biology. And I think you can offer different concentrations per se. Um, and specifically for the marine bio program, there is not a five year master degree. Um, if you were to, want to pursue a master's that would be something that you could um, reach out as an undergrad start to work in their lab develop that connection with a potential advisor um, and sort of get a project and go on from there with some funding um, so in order to kind of advance into marine biologist um, i would say it's really important right for um, math, actually, uh, particularly statistics. So I was not really aware of how much statistics I would be doing. Um, and I think it's something that when I was in high school, I had taken a, a class and I didn't focus on it as much as because I was like, oh, you know, I'm not going to use this. Um, but that was something that I, looking back, I wish I had focused more on. Um, and then again, you know, your basic chemistry, physics, biology, those are all going to, even though you may not be learning about marine stuff in that classroom, it all applies towards what we're seeing in the ocean, you know, so a lot of times as marine biologists, we use the, what we know on land or the terrestrial world to kind of make comparisons to our aquatic world. Um, so I would say really focus on those core science classes. Uh, and math, particularly statistics, is something that is important. It's a good question. Keep them coming, guys. Yeah, 
um, I have more questions like that. Are, they're just popping up. Um, yeah. So what kind of internships are available for internationals early career uh, like students? Like they want to go out for the international university, they have these kind of opportunities or how that come? Um, so here you have the opportunity particularly to work with a lot of ongoing research in the graduate program so uh, like for example i take students from my class i teach um, and then i say hey you know are you guys interested in getting some research experience um, and then my research involves going out and collecting fish and then as well as coming in and analyzing nutrients. So we get a little bit of field work as well as lab work. Uh, and I think that there's a lot of these different opportunities depending on which lab or, or which graduate student you're working with. Um, and then we also have some different programs here uh, in affiliation with some of the turtle monitoring um, that goes on on the beaches in Miami-Dade and Broward County. Um, as well as um, affiliation with the Marine Mammal uh, Rehabilitation Center down in Key Largo. So there's some kind of different uh, options here that we have networks in. And then again, um, the Everglades, I think, is, is something that is really um, special about our university. Um, because not only is that the freshwater river of grass, but it's also all the mangroves and all the snook and all the tarpon um, that are down around the Keys area and into the, the Florida Bay. So that's sort of a special feature that we have to um, get networks into with the Florida Fish and Wildlife. Um, yeah. Um, what does your research entail in your program like? how that's connect say again yeah sure um what does your research entail in your program so our research is kind of multifaceted in that we're not only focused on the organisms but we also put a concentration on the oceanography so if you were to come take classes your research would be involving going out in the boat and understanding, you know, how to collect water samples and analyze it for um, different contents of nutrients as well as, um, you know, oxygen, salinity, all that kind of stuff. We'd also take you through uh, identifying invertebrates, learning taxonomy, um, going out and working with fish, um, learning how to do field identification. Uh, and then there's also the step of taking the data you've collected and sort of analyzing it and processing it. And, you know, so we don't, a lot of our work that we try and focus on is, is not giving you busy work, but actually letting you conduct the real science. So you would go out, um, come up with a question, you know, what is the effect of uh, hard surface versus a natural surface on species diversity? And if you go look in the mangroves versus um, on the rocky shore and do some cool scientific comparisons there. So I think we, we really try and facilitate uh, real life research experience for you. Uh, I see a question in the chat. I have an undergrad degree in arts and associate's degree in biology. Even though I don't have an undergrad degree in science, could I still be a good candidate for the marine science in uh, an MS in marine biology? Um, I would say yes, you definitely shouldn't limit yourself just because of what your main associates or what your uh, degree is. I think that as long as you do have, um, you know, an undergrad degree, uh, that's sort of the main qualification. And then if you develop uh, the connections and work in a lab, uh, and show that you understand the scientific method and are capable of doing the work um, and kind of develop that relationship with a advisor, um, then it's definitely possible for you to move forward in a master's program.
Oh yeah, I have another question here. Um, they are asking if you would say like if for most students in high schools, it's very important to take like biology, calculus, math, and statistics, even if they think that it's not that important based in a marine kind of uh, situation. Like. Yeah, you know, um, when you're taking your, your bio class and you're learning about cell structure and, and photosynthesis and, and um, you're, you're trying to understand different weird math and calculus, it all comes together, right? Because uh, a cell in a, um, in a fish is the same as a cell in you and I. And so understanding how that functions is still gonna be able to be applied to a fish versus a human. Um, I think trying, you know, photosynthesis, these processes are all still the same in the ocean and driving the same kind of uh, mechanisms. And, you know, really all this stuff, right? We, we came from the oceans and so it, it is all the same there. Um, and then mathematically, you know, I personally struggled with that. I'm not a good math person. Um, and I was sitting there scratching my head, you know, why on earth do I need to understand calculus? Um, and I have multiple times come into areas where I'm trying to calculate the way that the water column is moving and the flux of nutrients coming in. And it's all this water physics calculus stuff. Um, so it really does apply. And I think that it's, it may not be that much fun um, right now, or, or what you may necessarily want to, to get to be doing, but I think it's a stepping stone um, that you kind of need to, to prove um, and, and to get under your belt to then be able to take those skills and apply them to the next level. Thank you so much. I think that that was really helpful because yeah, I, I just look up and someone asked like similar question, like what is something you would recommend to learn during these early stage? And I think you just answered that like those kind of things. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I think for me, something I realized is I was a little kid and I'd go in a pond and I'd scoop out a thing of algae and I'd sit there and see what was going on. Um, and now that's kind of my career. Um, is I get to go and, and sit and scoop out stuff and see what's there. Uh, yeah. and, I, and, and that's what I think is, is special about what I get to do is, uh, is I have fun. Um, I really enjoy it. And it's like what I did as a little kid for fun. Um, and now I have a way to, to do that and as well as make a big difference uh, in the world. So I think it's a, a really awesome career path and something that is obtainable for, for multiple different people and presents a lot of different avenues uh, for people as well. Yeah, just having fun in the career path. Yeah, yeah. you know, it, it is a lot of fun. Whether you want to be someone out on a boat scuba diving or you want to be someone in a lab analyzing data, you know, there's pick your adventure here uh, with marine biology. That's amazing. Again, just thank you so much for being here and you just give up like a lot of information, a lot, a lot of like experience and connections. And yeah. Yes, thank you guys for having me and I appreciate all the questions and, and interest. And if anyone has any more questions, uh, feel free to reach out to our booth um, as well as some of the emails that are in contact information that are there. All right.